Good morning, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here in Washington to be part of the Gov 2.0 Expo. The internet is driving transformation in the very roots of our democracy, the traditional leadership model where the singular expression of citizen participation is at the ballot box is transforming to an online model that empowers citizens by continually engaging and collaborating with them. In this way, Gov 2.0 represents far more than just the application of Web 2.0 to government. Why? Because Gov 2.0, I think as we all know, represents an opportunity for governments to push the evolution of democracy well, well beyond the ballot box and into life experience through online engagement. From my Australian government perspective, it's been inspiring to see the enthusiastic groundswell for Gov 2.0 innovation uh, right around the world, but particularly in the US, the UK and Canada. Having closely followed what is happening, I'd like to reflect on what I regard to be the three pillars of Gov 2.0. These are principles and they inform my advocacy of Gov 2.0 in Australia. The three pillars of Gov 2.0 are democratising data, citizen-centric services and participatory democracy. Together, they each represent a necessary principle for achieving open government. The first pillar is democratising data by making information collected for and on behalf of citizens publicly available in a useful open format, unless there's a demonstrable reason not to. This represents a big change in attitude, culture and practice. It means pro -dis a pro-disclosure approach where the default is to publish. Democratising data in this way encourages citizens and industry to contribute to and innovate with government information, adding social and economic value. The second pillar is citizen-centric services. Imagine a joined up government experience that adapts to you and your circumstances. Clear, seamless services that are both compellingly easy to use, always up to date, and with a look and feel suited to your taste and comfort zone. Citizen-centric services are not obscured or cluttered by the multi-layered complexities of government structures designed in a pre-digital era. Rather, they deliver a tailored service to the degree of personal detail and relevance determined by how much information the citizen is willing to provide. Like a bespoke suit or haute couture, online government services ought to fit the circumstance of each individual perfectly. This is the power that technology gives us. The third pillar of Gov 2.0 is participatory government. In theory at least, participatory government has always been there with consultation with citizens and stakeholders, a strong feature of mature democracies. This pillar is about engaging citizens collaboratively in the development, design and implementation of government policy. The web and social networking has provided new ways uh, to do this and we're exploring the opportunities with enthusiasm. Policies can be developed and designed with an improved capacity to adapt to changing circumstances. This is crowdsourcing at its most constructive, applied, purposeful and outcome oriented. You can see what may be a small step for the Twitterverse and the blogosphere is potentially a giant leap forward for participatory government. Each of these pillars has a substantial part to play in developing trust and confidence between government and citizens. And I'm pleased to report that Australia has made remarkable progress in all three areas through both policy and actual projects. If we look back at great endeavours of history, we find people often remember the event itself, but not what made it happen. History shows us that great endeavours require strong leadership, a good plan, and great people with a shared goal. Gov 2.0 and the goal of open government is no different, with the internet acting as the prime catalyst for the next big step in democracy. Firstly, we've, we've, we have given the Gov 2.0 agenda a resounding imprimatur through strong leadership. At the forefront of visionary public policy in Australia is the Universal National Broadband Network. This fibre to the home, wholesale only, open access network will truly close the digital divide. In addition, the digital education revolution will put computers into the hands of every secondary student. Australia's commitment to social inclusion in the digital economy is unrivaled. This commitment underpins the confidence with which the Australian government 
at all levels, federal, state and local, can invest in Gov 2.0. Our Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, has expressed his commitment to open government on many occasions. For example, in a recent speech, he said, democracy is about open government and that means accepting the best answers might sometimes come from outside the government. This desire to invite external input to government is an important underlying principle of open government, and he tweets. In another exciting development, our Special Minister of State, Joe Ludwig, and our Minister for Finance, Lindsay Tanner, will soon be announcing in Australia a declaration of open government, a direct result of the work done by our Gov 2.0 task force. This builds on the leadership reflected in the legislative amendments to the Freedom of Information Act and the new Information Commissioner Act, which finally passed the Australian Senate on May the 13th of this year. These amendments, now awaiting gazettal, update the statutory right of all Australians to access government documents, including a new pro-disclosure objective. This right is justified on the grounds that it encourages transparency and political accountability. The Information Commissioner-designate, Professor John McMillan, has already been appointed. This new statutory position is to advise government on policy and practices regarding the collection, use, disclosure, management, administration, storage and accessibility of information held by the government and systems or proposed systems for these activities. Secondly, we've created a good plan built on this legislated base for implementing Gov 2.0 through a whole range of initiatives. Policy actions to date include the Australian Gov 2.0 Task Force Report and their thoughtful recommendations. This document is an outstanding blueprint for Gov 2.0 in Australia. The government's acceptance of the vast majority of recommendations was warmly welcomed and I acknowledge the presence of Dr Nicholas Gruen, the chair of the task force here at the Washington Expo. He'll be speaking in the Lessons uh, from Down Under panel session later this morning. I will mention just one other initiative arising out of this report, uh, the establishment of a new Australian Gov 2.0 uh, showcase. This showcase will be an online record of Australian 2.0 uh, initiatives and it's, the aim of it is to inspire through uh, further public, private and community collaboration. Another policy of particular importance is the Australian Government ICT reform program. We've all learnt lessons about how poor procurement practices prevent or even stifle innovation. This program ensures ICT procurement has a positive impact on public sector innovation in an open and increasingly interoperable environment. Savings are taken from the business as usual ICT expenditure and channeled into a fund for new ICT innovation projects. We've also appointed an ICT supplier advocate to ensure a level playing field for our amazing array of small ICT businesses competing for government contracts. Strong progress is also being made to publish government data sets on data.gov.au. This is the new pro-disclosure environment coming to fruition. For example, I was pleased to see just a few days ago the decision that the Australian parliamentary website will now be under a Creative Commons by attribution licence. Thirdly, I'm delighted to get the opportunity to reflect on the work of our great people. Australia today has a strong and motivated community providing leadership for Gov 2.0 that spans the public sector, uh, the tech community and business. This community has contributed an invaluable amount of skill, ideas and enthusiasm and I'd like to thank them. Australia's progress on Gov 2.0 is definitely a collaborative adventure. Finally, there's an important shared goal at play each of the policies and programs fit together to achieve an overarching vision for an inclusive society and a stronger democracy. People everywhere want to see more open, engaged and transparent government. They're clamouring for it and rewarding political parties who, to commit, who commit to it and deliver with their voices and their votes. Our democratic institutions and practices must transform or risk becoming irrelevant. Regardless of policy, People have indicated in numbers their communication platforms of choice. It is in the cloud and most likely always will be. Governments that don't reflect the digital lives of their constituents cannot represent them. I believe that governments, being responsible for ensuring the public interest, need to invest now to ensure the transformation 
evolves democracy to be more participatory, builds social inclusion and creates economic opportunity. The future success of today's leaders of the world's great democracies will be determined by their confidence and capacity to implement Gov 2.0 inclusively, building trust in a modern open government along the way. In closing, the social transformation driven by the internet is already happening and I'm proud of Australia's vision and plan to be a part of that. The three pillars, democratising data, citizen-centric service and participatory democracy help to codify the task of successfully evolving into genuinely open government. After all, it's the genuinely open nature of the internet that make it democracy's true friend. Thank you.